Okay, in today's video, I am going to go over refraction. And we're going to talk about it just qualitatively. We're not actually going to do any calculations, but of course this is leading up to and is related to Snell's Law, but we'll do some calculations using Snell's Law in the next video. Refraction is the bending of a wave when it enters a material that will travel at a different speed. So here is our wave or our ray of light. It could be light or sound, but we're talking about light. It's cross, it's traveling through this upper material, maybe that's air, it's crossing this boundary, and when it crosses this boundary, it'll be traveling through a different material, and it'll be traveling at a different speed, in this case, a slower speed, and therefore, it's going to bend, and in this case, it's bending towards what we call the normal line, and you can see that it has bent, because you can see that theta two, the angle of refraction, is less than theta one, the angle of incidence. Okay, now, Let's just go through and talk about the two different cases. Once again, we have two different materials. We have the upper material, and we have the lower material. The upper material has an index of refraction of N1. The lower material has an index of refraction of N2. The lower material, its index of refraction is greater than the material in the upper part of our diagram. So this material down here has a greater index of refraction, this material up here has a lower index of refraction. And if a light wave or a ray of light was to strike that boundary at a 90 degree angle, it would just travel straight across, so to speak, and kind of exit that boundary at a 90 degree angle. That is not that interesting. We want to know what happens when a ray of light strikes that boundary at an angle. And we, did, we said earlier in the previous slide that it's going to bend. We want to know which way is it going to bend and how do we figure that out. So if the light ray was to go straight across, it would follow this path. It doesn't do that. In order to figure out what it's going to do, the first thing we always do is draw the normal line. Please always draw the normal line first. Okay, you don't really have to draw this arrow here, but you see we've been given this, so we're going to draw the normal line first. The normal line is drawn perpendicular to the surface or the interface, or the boundary between the two materials, and you want to draw it so it crosses the boundary exactly where the ray of light strikes the boundary, so that the surface, the ray of light, and the normal line all come together at one point. The normal line is not drawn over here. The normal line is not drawn over here. It is drawn right there where the ray of light strikes that boundary, and it is perpendicular to that boundary. Okay. Now we got that straight, let's figure out what happens to the ray of light when it crosses that boundary. Now, when a ray of light goes from a material with a lower index of refraction into a material with a higher index of refraction, it is going to bend, and it is going to bend so that it bends towards the normal line. Once again, if the light went straight, it would do this, but I've made this angle smaller, and I bent it towards the normal line like that. So it comes through, crosses the normal line, and then bends, and I've bent it, what we call, towards the normal line. Now there are some important, important parts of this diagram which you need to know the names of. First of all, there's that angle, then there's that angle, and there's this upper ray. This upper ray is called the ray of incidence, or the incident ray, because it is coming in to the diagram or into the boundary, like that. The angle is also called the angle of incidence. So we have the incident ray and we have the angle of incidence. After it crosses the boundary, we call this ray the refracted ray. And we call this angle, you guessed it, the angle of refraction. So those are four important things that you should be able to identify both rays and both angles. Okay, now let me point out a couple of important things. The angle, the angle is always measured from the normal line to the ray. From the normal line to the ray, not from the boundary. I think a lot of times in math class, you got a piece of paper, a horizontal line on it, another line coming in like this at an angle, and the teacher says, okay, what is that angle? And you just put your protractor on there, and you typically measure this angle. That is not the angle we're talking about. The angle of incidence and the angle of refraction are always measured from the normal line to the ray. From the normal line to the ray. Okay, please remember that. The other thing is, 
before the ray bends, it has to cross the normal line, so to speak. It must go across the normal line and then bend. I have seen many students who will bend it so it looks like, or will bend it so it looks like it's reflecting off of the normal line, and they'll bring it down here. They'll kind of get the angle, the size of the angle right, but it's on the wrong side of the normal line. So it doesn't reflect off the normal line. The normal line is not a real line, it's not a mirror, it's just kind of a reference line we use. But the ray must cross the line and then bend, okay? So you can see, once again, when the light ray went from a material with a lower index of refraction into a material with a higher index of refraction, it is always going to bend towards the normal line. And as a result of that, the angle of refraction, theta 2, is always going to be less than the angle of incidence, theta 1. Okay? So that's the first case towards the normal line. Now, the other case, you might guess, is the opposite case, because you can either go one way or the other. That's really all there is to it. So we're going to draw our ray this way, striking that surface. We have N1 and N2 again, but this time N2 is less than N1. So the index of refraction of this lower material is less than the index of refraction of this upper material. If the light ray was to go straight across again, it would do this. Well, it doesn't do that. We know it's going to bend. First thing we always do, draw the normal line. Now, in this case, when it went into a material with a higher index of refraction, it bent towards the normal line. Now it's going into a material with a lower index of refraction. So what is it going to do? That's right, it's going to bend away from the normal line. So I opened this angle up. And I made it bigger, and our diagram looks like that. Okay? We still have an angle of incidence, we still have an angle of refraction, we still have an incident ray, and we still have a refracted ray. But when light goes from a material with a higher index of refraction into a material with a, excuse me, when light goes from a material with a higher index of refraction into a material with a lower index of refraction, it is going to bend um, away from the normal line, and therefore the angle of refraction will be greater than the angle of incidence. Okay? Those are the only two cases. Entering a greater towards the normal line. Entering a lower material, entering a, lower, a material with a lower index of refraction, it bends away from the normal line. All right? That's the only two cases. I can't think of anything other in the case where it would be something different. It's either this one or this one. It's either towards the normal line or away from the normal line. Okay. So let's go through and look at a couple of conceptual examples. Here is a prism. We'll assume it's plastic or glass. On the outside we have air, on the inside we have plastic or glass, which plastic or glass is going to have a higher index of refraction. Air has an index of refraction of 1, glass has an index of refraction of about 1.5. Here's a light ray that's striking that boundary. Well, what is it going to do? Well, before you even think about it, just go ahead and draw the normal line so you have that picture in your head. Now, this has a higher index of refraction, so it's going to bend towards the normal line until it strikes this boundary. Now it's going to enter a material with a lower index of refraction, draw the normal line, and now bend it away from the normal line. So once again, that's what it looks like. I bent them so they look like they're bent. And this is my angle of incidence. This is my angle of refraction, angle of incidence, and angle of refraction. All right? Now, sometimes students will ask, well, how much should I bend it when I bend it either towards or away from the normal line? For now, because we're not actually calculating the angles, which we'll do that, but for now, just bend it so that it looks like it's bent, so that it looks like the angle of refraction is either more or less than the angle of incidence. Okay? Make it look like it's bent. Now, this side is parallel to this side, Therefore, this ray should really be parallel to this ray, okay? Let's do one more. Okay, once again, we have a triangle, okay? You can think of this as the Pink Floyd example, dark side of the moon. We have a triangle. We'll assume it's made out of plastic or something. It has a higher index of refraction than the air which it is surrounding it. We have a ray that strikes it like this, and we want to know what's going to happen to that light ray as after it crosses that boundary. The first thing we always do, draw the normal line. The normal line is perpendicular to this surface. 
A lot of times students will just want to draw it straight up and down or I don't know, some other way. You got to make this normal line and this side, this interface, have a 90 degree angle. Okay, normal, 90 degrees. So this has a higher index of refraction. Now we're going to turn the light ray, we're going to bend the light ray so that it bends towards the normal line. The angle of refraction is less than the angle of incidence. Now it strikes this boundary and now it's going into a material with a lower index of refraction. Draw the normal line first. We're now we're going to bend it away from the normal line. This is our angle of refraction. This is our angle of incidence. The angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence. Okay? So once again, angle of incidence, angle of refraction. Theta 1, incident angle, theta 2, refracted angle, like that. Okay? So those are a couple examples. I think you should have a good handle now on what refraction is. Uh, hopefully you found that video helpful. If you found it helpful, you can give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment in the comment section below. And thank you very much.